What up, it's your boy Tone202 coming at you live and direct. Uh, Ferguson, look, I have been following the story somewhat, and not that I'm casual about it, but there's only so much that you can take. I mean, how many people have they killed in Ferguson or got shot recently? Uh, just in Ferguson, and then you're looking at all over the United States, within the last month, there's been like, what, about eight, nine black men, black men dead within the last month, just all over the United States, and, and probably more because of prison systems that kill black men all the time, or they get black men set up, and then, you know, so I've been telling people that we are at war because it's the truth, uh, and if you don't believe we're at war, go look at some of the pictures in Ferguson. Uh, and look at some of the militarized uniforms that they're wearing. Uh, look at the tanks that they, a small town Missouri, had just brought in a bunch of tanks by, um, by uh, train. And they also had some Red Cross uh, tanks there too, medic units. When I say we're at war, I'm not playing. And just because it's not a full-scale war does not mean that we're not at war. We are at war. There is a war on black men. And the police, see, see, a lot of people have been talking about how the police in Ferguson aren't from there. And remember when it used to be the police officers would be from your hometown. It'd be somebody you knew and grew up with, so it wasn't a problem. They understood you. They know that you're not in Walmart with an MK whatever BB gun that was, they they would know you. You'd be like, oh, that's just so-and-so. That's a BB gun. It's in Walmart. It's so at Walmart. We're not going to shoot and kill this guy. Whoever the those people are who called in the police, they said there's a black man, and it was an irresponsible couple is what the report says. Uh, I don't know if it was a white couple or a black couple, but it's a good chance it was a white couple. And they said that there's a black man running around here with a gun, and they were not lying. That's true. But what they didn't know is that the gun was a BB gun. And if Walmart isn't alarmed, then why would you call in the city cops? Okay. So all this stuff in Ferguson is going on. You're like, here we are in Ohio. Yo, black man running around with a gun. Nobody else is alarmed but you. No one. So the cops come in. They shoot the guy. And he falls. Then they tell him to get down on the ground. They shoot him. He's on the phone talking to his woman when he gets shot. Okay, here's how it goes. Cops rush in. He has the gun, but he doesn't even have it like this. You know how he has it? It's on his back. He has it holstered like this. Cops, cops come in, blah, blah, blah. Shoot the kid. Guy's like 22, father of two. Shoots him, and when he falls down, then they tell him to get down on the ground. He's dying, crying. And, and, and takes out his phone and is talking to his woman. This is the way I read the story. Uh, so I could be wrong on some of that, semantics, yada, yada, yada. But his girlfriend is stating all the things that he said right before she heard him die. Imagine, his girlfriend or his wife. Just imagine that. Drink that in. You just got shot. You're not even sure why you got shot. You're dying and your woman of your two children is listening to you die. Yo, I'm telling you, the stuff that the cops are doing is just so out of line. They're inciting such rage that it's even funny. And in Ferguson, like these, and then these news reporters are so fake. Like in Ferguson, they're talking about how the people are inciting the riots, but the cops are telling the people uh, that they're going to kill them. Listen, there are protests all the time, all over the world. And there are ways to protest and there are ways to quell protest. The way these cops are doing it, they're making it seem like they're not vulnerable. They're making it seem like they're going to live forever. They're God. Like, Ferguson is, has so much unrest. You got a cop just waving around an M16. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Just like, I'm going to kill you. Like, do you think you're going to live forever? Do you think that retribution is not going to come back to you? Who do you think? Like, y'all think y'all androids? Like, do you you think one day it ain't going to catch up to you? Is that what you believe? 
You better get out of here with that. You're going to get yours just like everybody else going to get theirs. You better slow down and think about that. I mean, truthfully, being a cop is not easy. But the real problem is, like a lot of people mentioned, those cops aren't from Ferguson. And I'm going to tell you something. A bigger problem is those cops are state cops. They're funded by the state. That's it. Everybody knows that. But listen to this. We are all, we are all bound by the state. When they come and snatch your car off the curb, state. When they come and give you a ticket, that's why they've been handing out so many tickets. State. All state funding. But we all know that that state funding isn't going back into the state. It's going into somebody else's pockets. And a lot of times, it's the police. Let's, let's think about this. There's a stretch of highway in Texas where they are known for stopping people and pulling them over, taking their money and trying to say that they're putting it in the system, but that's not what they're doing. They're pocketing it. Especially if you have over a certain amount, it's going to take you so long just to get that money back. Case in point, they had a guy who owned his own business, black guy. They stopped him. He had over $10,000 on him. I think he was a, um, he sold cars or something like that. But his father also was in business with him. They took his money. By the time he was able to get his money, they had already been able to keep $5,000 of that money. You can see a video where the cops are trying to convince uh, uh, these two Latino guys to hand over their money. They're like, we know you have money in there. They're trying to, he's like, I'll let you go. Just give us the money. It's all robbery. That's not police work. Those guys aren't committing a crime. You're robbing them. There was a case in Florida about four or five years ago where a black guy got, um, <clears throat> where he was, uh, uh, he was shot. They shot, they killed him, he had $900 on him, they took his money. And what, they, and what the people who knew him, they said, they also robbed him. The lady said right there on camera, she said they killed him, and then they robbed him. See, that's what they're doing. They're either doing it literally, they're doing it one way or another. They're robbing you to get more state funding, so-called, but really what it is, it's police funding. Those cops aren't from Ferguson. And those cops aren't cops. A lot of the cops that you're seeing, those cops aren't from your hometown. They're not cops. They're soldiers. That's why they're dressed like that. It's called being a police state. And that's where you're at. Believe it. Every single state, if not, is going to be, is going to be like this. These cops are unfamiliar with the neighborhood. They're unfamiliar with the people they, they have a disconnection with the people. And if you really look at the law, let's, I mean, if you go back like uh, uh, 46, 56 or something like that, a long time ago, the police were actually chosen by the people. That is no longer the case. Those aren't police officers. Police officers used to be chosen by us. They used to be I think it was voted in or some kind of way. We wanted you to be a cop because we knew you knew us and you were a good person. We knew that you were serving and protecting us. That's why we, the people, hired you. That is no longer the case. That, that has been gone for 20, 30, 40 years. It's been out the door. These people are soldiers and that's why they look like that. That's why they're, all their equipment is militarized. That's why they've gotten over, uh, they received over $422,000 worth of military equipment. I was in the military. I know what it looks like. And it ain't, I mean, it's not hard to tell. But when you get specialized equipment, when there's a sniper sitting on top of a roof and you're thinking, well, wait a minute, I'm talking police sniper. And you're looking at this dude, he's in OD green outfits. He's got the special specs on it. No, that stuff isn't police. That's military. That's military. You know what I'm saying? You know, police, they have different equipment. Those guys have military equipment. Those are not cops. This is why this is happening. There was a shooting Tuesday where uh, in St. Louis, uh, and some of you have seen this YouTube video, and basically... The guy, he just, I don't know if he wanted to get shot. I'm not sure. 
dude is obviously off the off his meds. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna give you two scenarios. So this guy goes in purposely, goes into the Arab store, takes two sodas, takes them out to the curb, puts them on the curb. The guy who owns the store calls the cops. When he calls the cops, the guy is still standing there. He has a knife in his hand. Now, police roll up, one squad car. The guy approaches the cops and tells him to shoot him. Shoot me, shoot me, shoot me. Starts cursing at him, shoot me. The cops shot him. They shot him dead. I would have shot him too, but there's no way I would have killed him. I would have busted one of his kneecaps out so fast because I know he's not moving after that. Either that or I would have tased him. The reason why I said I would have shot him because those cops weren't carrying tasers or some people are saying. So if, which I don't understand, but if I had a taser, I would have tased the heck out of that dude. That was the whole point of the taser is to alleviate deaths. That was the point of the taser. We promulgated tasers so you stop killing people. Oh no, they pull out, you know, the 38 snub and just go ahead and, or I think they got 40, 40, uh, Glock 40s now. I know because I've had some pointed at me at point blank range by cops, uh, Glock 40s and uh, light him up. And they could have shot him in the leg. They could have tased this dude. They had another scenario years ago where white dude going ham. This dude got two guns. Uh, one gun. He has a, 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 a 38 long. It's either that or a Colt 45, one or the other. Anyways, he's holding the gun. He's sitting in a chair in the middle of the road. You know what the cops did to him? They shot the gun out of his hand. They arrested him. That man is probably free today. Different scenario. People are like, hey, the guy approached him. I would have shot. If you see where the guy was shot, you would have seen where he approached him. Then he walked up on like a ledge and he was not even near them. He was not even approaching them then. They gave him commands. This is true. But just because you give somebody a command doesn't mean you have the right to kill them. Like, that is so far extreme. Don't do this or I'm going to kill you. Like, that dude... They could have got rid of that dude so quick. That happened here in Columbus, too. And they said uh, uh, somebody with a knife could have easily damaged somebody, a officer, faster than they could damage somebody with a gun. And I'm like, like, I didn't buy that. They shot that kid. He was 22 years old, said he had a knife. They killed him. They could have easily tased that dude, which is the whole point, or they could have shot him in the leg. See, and he was black. See, there is a war on black men. Spike Lee had it right, and it's the damn truth. And I don't care what none of y'all say. There's a war on black men. I'm driving down the street, uh, minding my business. I just got off work. I got a co-worker with me. I'm driving broad daylight, minding my business. Here's a cop off to my left just looking at me like this. Like trying to start it. You know what I'm saying? They like to start stuff with us, and then they say it's our fault. Then they run to these corny, corny, uh, then they run to these corny, uh, 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 court systems, uh, grand jury. Get out of here with that. Like, this is why the people of Ferguson is upset. Because we know those grand juries are not for us. It is not for the people anymore. It is all state run. None of that is for the people. None of that is by the people. Zimmerman should be in jail for life. None of that, what they are doing, are for or by the people. It is all for the state, and they're pocketing all that money. They're making all that money off of us. We are hostages. That's what it really is. And if you don't believe me, you better look at Eric Garner and how they, how they, how they killed him. Watch and see if they get off on that. They're not going to put that police officer in jail. Look at Scott, how they killed him, shot him in the back. Boom, one time. You think that officer did a lot of time in jail? No, they gave him a, a year or the option to buy out of $50,000 or something like that. I'm telling you, this is a police state. You are under arrest whenever they feel like it, and they will kill you if they want to.